What's going on guys? Welcome back to the red portion of our Rivals of Ixalan set review. If you guys are watching on YouTube, please feel free to, feel free to smash those like and subscribe buttons. Really appreciate that. Uh, it helps me out a lot. And if you're watching on Twitch, you can also follow or subscribe. Uh, both those things I am eternally grateful for and you help keep me alive by doing so. Um, yeah, so first red card in Rivals of Ixalan is Blood Sun. Obviously the corollary is Blood Moon. Blood Sun, Blood Moon, three mana. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card, which is great. That's all I need to hear. I'm on board. All right, next card. No, just kidding. Um, all lands lose all abilities except mana abilities. This is interesting. It's a lot worse against some cards. It's a lot worse against dual lands, for example. But it's a lot better against some lands, like fetch lands, Maze of Ith. So, I mean, it's interesting. I think this card does something. I think it's very good. Uh, the fact that you draw a card when it comes into play is also fantastic because it's just like, eh, this is my turn three play. I draw a card. I don't lose any tempo. Or you don't lose, not, you lose, you lose tempo if you're playing this, but you don't lose um, card advantage. Like you're not losing anything by committing this to the board, even if it doesn't have a great effect. And if your opponent is heavily reliant on fetch lands and like something like modern, like, okay. I mean, get wrecked, I guess. Like I can see this single-handedly... Uh, locking them out of the game, whereas if they play their fetch lands with a blood moon, they still get to uh, tap their lands for red. So, you know, I mean, this card seems great. Uh, I, I think it's it's lacking in, in more areas than it's gaining on blood moon, but I don't think that's... I still think blood moon is pretty broken, and this card is a nice uh, accompaniment to blood moon. That being said, blood moon is a degenerate magic card, and I don't think we need a 12th... Uh, moons 9 through 12 in addition to Vegas of the Moon and Blood Moon but um, yeah card's good Bombard 3 mana it deals 4 damage to target creature this card's actually fine I wish it dealt damage to players but 3 mana 3 mana for 4 damage to a, a creature or a player is pretty good we already had that in like uh, Flame Javelin which was 3 mana 3 red or two colorless hybrid. So if you give me free cases, I'll sub. What does that mean? I don't even have cases. Uh, Bavard does Fortnite. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, this card's great and limited. I can even... S I think you have better options in standard. I don't... I, you're always going to play this. You're, this is first pickable and limited, I think. Four damage for three mana with no, no stipulations. You don't have to deal... It doesn't have to be a non-flying creature. It's not a sorcery. This is a good card. It's a good removal spell. Brass's Bounty. This card's so weird. Seven mana. Red sorcery. Like you do. For each land you control, create a colorless treasure artifact with tap, sack, and Yeah, you know what treasures do. So, turn seven. Let's just say you have seven lands. You're, you're playing this with, with all the, the lands. <coughs> um... Then you get seven treasures. Now what? I don't know where you go from there. I guess... Um, I guess if you do play this in modern and you play it off of seven lands with nothing else, like no signets, no pentad prisms... Um, then you do get to cast an Emrakul the next turn. You get to go seven lands, seven treasures, eighth land, fifteen Emrakul. You, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold my breath for that happening in modern. And I don't know, man. This does some cool stuff. Revel and riches is a thing, yeah, but good lord, you have to have Brass's bounty and Revel and riches in your deck before you do that. Seven mana. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Brazen Freebooter. Four mana for a 3-3. Three, three. And we know this is like a limited common. Uh, you can tell because it's a four mana 3-3. Three, three. When it enters battlefield, create a treasure. Okay. CN limited, Brazen Freebooter. You're brazenly trying to be in constructed and that ain't happening. Two mana for a Buccaneer's Bravado. A target creature gets plus one, plus one, and gains first strike. Or target pirate gains plus one, plus draw, and double strike. <coughs> um, this isn't bad as far as combat tricks go in limited. 
I don't think you're ever going to play this in constructed. I don't think there's even a pirate. Like, you're going to give your 2 2 pirate double strike and plus one plus one. That's fine. I mean, it's not great, but it's fine. And uh, otherwise, you're just going to be playing this as a plus one plus one in first strike combat trick. I, I think it's fine as a combat trick. If this is what you're looking for in limited, okay, sure. Um, I don't see this making it into any red based pirate standard decks. Charging Tuscodon. 4-4 four, for four, 5. 4-4 four, for four, 5 has become like the stats of like interesting creatures. Um, I always like creatures that have stats for that are 4-4 four, for four, 5, even if they don't always impress me. I'm always like, mm, I can see why you made it a 4-4 four, for four, 5. I understand. Uh, trample, if Charging Tuscodon would deal combat damage to a player, it deals double that damage to that player instead. That's actually, see, that's a good ability. So if they block with the 3-3, three, three, one gets through and they take two. If they don't block, they take eight. This card's real scary and limited. I don't think you're ever playing it in Constructed because you have better rates than 4-4-4-5, four, 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 like a 4-5-4-4 four, four, four in Ripjaw Raptor. But, like I said, I like the option. Daring Buccaneer, a 2-2 two, two for one mana. This is the uh, the pirate version of Silvergill Adept and the uh, the vampire one. Uh, as additional cost, reveal a pirate or pay two. And this is just another another one drop. This is like the third two power one drop so far we've seen in this set. Do you remember when Savannah Lions was rare? And then we had Elite, is Elite Vanguard, the 2 1 soldier for, for one white. And you're like, wow, this is uncommon. And now you're just like, oh, another two power one drop. Okay, I understand. Cool. Yeah, this card's good. I mean, if. If, if you have the if there's a red pirate deck instead of just a blue black one this is going to be in it this is also going to be in it this card's great dire fleet daredevil two one for two uh fleet caster mage if you will first strike uh when dire fleet to daredevil enters the battlefield exile target instant or sorcery and opponent controls for an opponent's graveyard you may cast that card this turn you may spend mana as though it were any mana to cast it um this card's great a lot more restricted because obviously you can't control what they're going to have in their deck. And if they just haven't played an instant or a sorcery in like four turns, five turns, you might have to wait till the later game to actually get some value out of this. But the options are still pretty good. And it's still a 2-1 first strike for two. And it's still a pirate. So it does, it has a, it hits a lot of the, the cool metrics that you want it to hit. Like it's got a, a relevant tribe. It's decent in combat because the first strike, it's, it's, it's well costed and you get a, a really strong ability. So. Itali, Primal Storm, the Red Elder Dinosaur. Six mana for a 6-6. Six, six. Whenever Itali, Primal Storm attacks, exile the top card of each... This card is great. I like this card a lot as well. Uh, exile the top card of each player's library. So again, this is a, it's an insane commander card. But also even in standard, you get a 6-6 six, six for 6, which is fine stats. It's whenever it attacks, not even when it deals damage, right? So I attack with this guy. Immediately, we exile the both cards from, from the top of our libraries. You can cast any number of non-land cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost. I don't know how this is the red Elder Dinosaur when the white one is literally just big, dumb dinosaur. It's just like, hey, man, I got some keywords. Again, I say this in every color, but every other one has impressed me. I think the, I think the green one's kind of terrible as well. This is just such a, like, this card is, I like this card a lot, dude. 6-6 six, six for 6. And, it, like, by just attacking with it, not only do you get to technically draw free cards, but, like, you get to play them for free. That's pretty good. Like, this, this card seems good. I like this card a lot. <laughs> White one doesn't even have lifelink. You're right. Fanatical Firebrand, one one for one goblin pirate. Looks like a looks like a little monkey. Haste. Sack sack it deals one damage target creature or player. This is so this is Mog. This is a obviously a Mog Fanatic throwback. Um This is fine. This card's fine. <clears throat> I mean, being able to shoot shoot them for one, it also has haste, so you're just attacking on turn one. This is a, obviously a, a strict upgrade to... this is. I would say this is a strict upgrade. Uh, strictly better than a Raging Goblin. Um, but I don't know if this is... 
Red decks could definitely play this in Constructed. I can definitely see this card finding a home because it's super. You want you want better you want a better art than this for for a new Mog. I feel like the art should have been better. What this? Look at this. It's like a it's literally a monkey goblin with a bunch of like a bunch of I guess these are wicks that are all on fire. <laughs> this is fantastic. This art's great, dude. All right, yeah, this card's cool. I, I like this card a lot. So. Forerunner of the Empire. Four mana for a 1-3. All right, so I'm already out. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a dinosaur reveal and then shuffle and put it on top. Okay, so this is just the the Harbinger. When it, when it, when it, and then the, the bonus is whenever a dinosaur enters the battlefield under your control, you may have it deal one damage to each creature. Wow, that's interesting. So th this because of the expensive nature of dinosaurs, um, this is rarely going to be able to deal one more than one damage per turn. Uh, and if it does, if you're able to cast like two two drops, two two drop dinosaurs, you're probably going to kill both of them because it's going to deal one damage to each of them. So, uh, yeah, I don't really want a, a one three for four in my dinosaur deck, especially when it's not drawing many cards. So, see you later, bye. <clears throat> Form of the dinosaur. This is actually a card I made a video on. You can find it on YouTube at uh, youtubecom slash And uh, I like this card a lot. A lot of people were were giving this card some slack, but I think this card is actually super cool. Um, it for one thing, it resets your life total, and for two, you just get to kill guys off. Like I, I get that, like okay, so you go back to fifteen, and if they have a six six or a four four or a five seven, um, you might not want to take the damage, but you're probably going to anyway because they get to attack you. Furthermore, if you were at five life or two life, and then you played form of the dinosaur. You're just working with you're you're on borrowed time anyway. Um, this card seems super interesting, so I I'm a fan of this card, and uh, I would not be surprised if this made it into decks. It has a real like kind of Frexian unlife feel to it, where you're like gain an extra ten life. Instead, you're like gain an extra fifteen life, and uh, you know kill your guys every turn. So, um, yeah, you can actually flicker this. And you would actually go to, you know, it would reset you to 15 again. So, yeah, I think this card's cool. I like this card a lot. 3 2 for 3. Whenever it is dealt damage, it deals 2 damage to target opponent. Okay. Sure. I mean, this is just a baby. What's the, uh, what's the big one? The uh, fives. The one from, the one from regular Exelon, the six mana guy. <clears throat> so, this is just a tiny version of that. Um, yeah, great. Fine and limited. Not gonna not gonna make it into your constructed dinosaur deck, but Goblin Trailblazer two one four two again with the menace. A lot of a lot of, a lot of these pirates are a uh, real menacing. Suncrown Hunter nailed it. There you go. Speaking of like unlike regular Hunter, um, yeah, this card's fine. Um, I don't depending on what color the pirate deck ends up being in standard and uh, how many two drops you have or need. I don't know if this card is going to be good enough. Uh, it is a two one for two with an ability, and Menace makes your your raid triggers a lot a lot more reliable. Um, so I don't know, but you're probably gonna play this in limited. So Mutiny one mana target creature an opponent controls deals damage equal to its power to another target creature that player controls. Not a fan of cards like this because they're far too reliant on uh, having. Like, you have to have this, like, perfect storm of, of creatures. Like, you have to have a guy that's big enough to kill the guy that's next to it, right? Um, and sometimes that just doesn't happen. Or you don't get to kill the bigger guy. You use the bigger guy to kill the smaller guy. And they still have the bigger guy. So, I'm not thrilled with it. It is one mana, though. So, maybe you play it. But, I don't know. There's a lot of utility creatures that you can kill off with this, though. So, maybe that's fine. But if they have... And if they have no creatures, you're already ahead. So, so don't complain. Needle Tooth Raptor, four mana for a two two. Whenever it's dealt damage, it deals five damage to target creature and opponent controls. That's pretty strong. Um, two two for four, not the best stats, but obviously this guy is going to. This guy can take down seven sevens, so that's pretty good. Like the uh, the six six that was also reprinted in Rivals of Ixalan, the green guy. Uh, it's pretty easy to block that guy and then just kill it, which is nice. So yeah, you got this little cutie, and you can take down big guys. Don't think you're playing this in standard, but cool. Uh, nice, nice versatile ability for, for limited. Three, four, four, four. <clears throat> this is just the uh, the whiptail. 
guy is that what it's called Whiptail? i don't know i don't know i don't know the names of these these guys the uh the green guy the the three four for two green green except it doesn't have reach so obviously worse than that but you're it's not in green so it's not really comparable you're probably still going to play this if you get it and you need a, a four drop that has a a reasonable butt again no standard Pirates Pillage. Four mana. <clears throat> As initial cost to cast Pirates Pillage, discard a card. Draw two cards and create two colorless treasure artifacts. Yeah, so this is, as far as the uh, Tormenting Voice variations go, I like this one a lot. Uh, I don't know if four mana is too expensive, but getting two treasures and two cards out of it's pretty good. Like, this could ramp you to seven, and then you can cast uh, that big six mana dinosaur. Or you can cast the other seven mana sorcery that gives you seven treasures. But it'll only give you five, I guess, because you're using two treasures. Hmm. So you're only netting three treasures. You're using two and then getting five, so you only net three. I don't think that's where we're going with this. But I don't... Uh, four mana is expensive, but might be worth it. I don't know. It might be too... Uh, it might be a little too expensive for, for constructed play. Reckless Rage, one red. It deals four damage to target creature you don't control and two damage to target creature you control. This is like a this is like a a char for creatures. So the problem my problem with this card is that you can't actually cast it if you don't have a creature. Because it doesn't it needs targets. It needs two, needs two targets. So I mean you can very well kill a bigger creature for one mana, but you may also have to take down one of your own guys, which is kind of sad uh nevertheless four damage for one man is pretty good and if you can manage to like deal two to your three three that seems okay uh worse than just straight worse than flame slash though obviously but yeah and the enrage the ability to uh trigger enrage with this is also very very good um so not to be overlooked especially as a, a limited enabler uh, i don't know how i don't know if that's very strong in standard but I would, I would wager not, but <clears throat> always open to that possibility. Rekindling Phoenix, another in a long line of, of Phoenix, Phoenix, Phoenix I. Four mana for a 4-3 flyer. Uh, when, it ended, when it dies, create an 0-1 red elemental creature token at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice this creature, and return target card named Rekindling Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn. Uh, so the nice thing about this is even if they find a way uh, to exile it when it's in your graveyard, you can just get another copy. It doesn't have to be the exact copy. Unfortunately, most things that exile are going to get all cards out of your graveyard currently, like Scavenging Grounds. Um, and the the one does have to survive until your next turn. But uh, this is, I mean, this is very similar to your traditional Phoenixes, where it's like, hey, I die, I come back. <clears throat> you know, you know the drill. You've been, you've done the Phoenix. You know, you've done this Phoenix dance before. C red one and a red for an enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus two plus one and first strike. These I feel like these pirates are are very intent on getting first strike. At the beginning of your end step, if you didn't attack with a creature, this turn sacrifice. This also seems like a cycle where like if you don't uh, attack with a creature, you sacrifice the enchantment. Uh, there's the blue one and this one, so I guess it's a two color cycle. I don't think they were other. I don't think there were other versions in like white or black. Um. Yeah, I mean, you're probably, you're, I want to say you're probably not playing this in standard, but there's definitely been red decks uh, in standard that have played two mana enchantments that give plus two power and, and ability. So maybe, probably not, but uh, I don't know. I'm reluctant to rule things like that out, so. Shake the Foundations. This art, when I saw this art, I was like, this art is so much cooler than this ability. But uh, for three mana, you get to deal one damage to each creature without flying and draw a card. I think the ability is actually fine. Um, cards that dealt one damage to all creatures without flying have traditionally been played before. Like, you've been able to find them in standard, in sideboards, or what have you. The fact that this draws a card and is an instant is even better. Um... So I can definitely see this uh, making an appearance in sideboard cards. In sideboard slots and standard. Unfortunately, it doesn't kill Thopters. <clears throat> uh, but it does... In, like, limited, it's going to hit your dinosaurs and enrage them. Uh, it could also enrage your opponent's dinosaurs as well. So good to keep that in mind. I guess I can kill Servos. It, it just depends on, like, how many one-toughness creatures are in standard. Like, the all the 1-1 all the one -one vampires are going to get killed by this. Um... So, 
you know, definitely could be useful. And the fact that you draw a card is just great. Shatter, destroy an artifact, one and a red. Yeah, we all know what Shatter does. It's a good card. Kills, as uh, as the art indicates, it does kill vehicles. So that's cool. Silverclad Ferocidons, seven mana for an eight, five. When it is dealt damage, each opponent sacrifices permanent. This card, <laughs> I mean, it's seven mana, but it does make me want to just shoot it a million times and uh, make them sacrifice all their permanents. If there's a way I can do that, I'm on board. But the fact that it costs seven... Also, this this very much reminds me of uh, the part in Jurassic World where Chris Pratt is is wrangling all the raptors. I feel like that's just where this art came from. And... Um, yeah, I like this ability. I just think the seven mana is a lot. Because I'm like, I'm going to have to go this seven mana for this guy and then deal it damage from any number of sources. Uh, and then I'm just like... Is this is this an, is this more work than I'm willing to put in? I don't know, maybe. So, <clears throat> anyway, I, I think the cool the card is cool though, and um, would not mind seeing it uh, do some broken stuff. But I I my I'm holding my breath. I'm not holding my breath because if I was, I'd be dead. That's what I'm saying. Stampeding a horn crest, five mana for a four four. Another five mana four four. See how common this is. Oh, I feel like we lagged a bunch there, so hopefully we're okay. Uh, Stampeding Horncrest has haste as long as you control another dinosaur. So this is basically like the... This is the... Uh, what up, Dovos, Dovos Grill? This is the the tuned-down version of Charging Monstrosaur. So instead of a 5-5 five, five for 5 with Trample and Haste, this is just a 4-4 four, four for 5 with maybe Haste. Kind of, kind of maybe I have Haste. I don't know. <clears throat> but either way... Could be good. It's probably, I mean, it's in limited, in limited, obviously. This is not gonna, this is not constructed playable. Storm Fleet Swashbuckler, 2 2 for 2. Ascend. Storm Fleet Swashbuckler has double strike as long as you have the city's blessing. This card is fine. It's easy to cast, it's one red. Uh, it does help you. There doesn't seem to be many red cards that have ascend. Uh, it seems to be one of the lesser, uh, lesser ascending colors. So having a guy that helps you get ascend <clears throat> or get the city's blessing is is reasonable and it's a 2-2 for 2 that could have double strike so not terrible sun colored raptor 1-2 um, two for 2 with trample i love i love one power creatures with trample it's like my favorite thing ever 3 mana sun colored raptor gets plus 3 plus 0 oh until end of turn um okay good for you 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 show the world Swaggering Corsair. <clears throat> Three mana for a 2-2 with Raid. It enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on if you attack with a creature this turn. So, like... This is interesting because I feel like there have already been, like, two other 3-3s three for two in this format that you didn't have to raid. So, I think I'm just going with those for now. And, um... I don't think we necessarily need another 3-3 three, three for three. I mean, if this is the one you get and you don't get the other ones, take it. But I'm not playing this in Constructed. I guarantee you. Tilanali's Crown. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, two mana for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to enchanted creature. That's nice because it does trigger your enrage. Uh, enchanted creature gets plus three, plus oh, and has trample. <clears throat> this is not bad for dinosaurs. Putting uh, putting a, a an enchantment that gives trample on your dinosaurs could be pretty good. Uh, Headstrong Brute might be better than that guy. The problem is this guy can block. Headstrong Brute cannot, which is relevant. Anyway, um, I can see this card being played in limited. Definitely being able to trigger your dinosaurs is huge. Trample is also huge. Plus three is huge. This is a lot of this is a lot of things happening for two mana on a common, and uh, it seems reasonable. <clears throat> Tillanali's Summoner, two mana for a one one, with Ascend. <clears throat> City's blessing relevant. When it attacks, you may pay X and a red. So if I pay four, let's say I pay a red and three, I create three one one red elemental creature tokens that are tapped and attacking. At the beginning of the next end step, exile those tokens. Unless you, this is reasonable. This is not bad. Every turn, this is this is kind of like lightning. What was that card called? It was a lightning, the one one that you could dash and then pump it. It's kind of like that because, but instead of pumping it, you're making X one ones. 
And then if you get to a point, like you can actually get to a point where you're using the one ones that you make in order to get your city's blessing, right? <clears throat> so that's pretty good. I like that a lot. This card's really strong. It's a one. It's for two mana. This card's great. Lightning Berserker. That's what it was. Yeah. So if you have like five mana, right? You have this and five lands. You attack, you make four 1-1s. One -one. So you have four 1-1s, one -ones, this, and five lands. You have City's Blessing. You get to keep all of the 1-1s one at the end of combat. That's cool. This is a cool card. I like this card a lot. And that was the that was the last red card. So, uh, yeah, red looks sweet. Um, looks a little aggressive. I'm not sure how many of these cards are going to see constructed play. It didn't look like a bunch. But... Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I uh, really appreciate it. Be sure to slam those like and subscribe buttons, and I'll see you next time for the green, the gold, the artifact, and the land. And if you haven't done so, be sure to check out the white, the red, or the white, the black, and the blue that we've already done. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it.